Arizona was sunk. The Navy Yard was badly damaged, and there were ships lying on the side, destroyers that were in the in the dry docks at that time. The Oklahoma was severely damaged. The West Virginia was there. My old battleship did not happen to be on the West Coast, so it was not affected. But uh, this was a pretty devastating thing to see. Uh, one of the significant achievements of the Japanese, when they came in, they were able to, their aircraft were able to drop torpedoes in Pearl Harbor, which is maybe 50 feet deep, and those torpedoes did not hit the bottom. They ran properly, and that's what destroyed the, the Arizona. Uh, the two big, two things they failed, the Japanese failed to do, was attack the submarine base, where there were several submarines, and that would have been a, an achievement in itself to damage those, but they also failed to attack the above ground fuel depot, which was not far from submarine base. And that would have been devastating. We would have been uh, without fuel and without a source in Pearl Harbor for I don't know how long. Uh, when we got there, possibly the Nevada battleship was aground because she had gone out and realized the problem and ran herself aground near the entrance to the harbor. But it's possible she may have been removed and it might not have been there. Everyone, please stand. Attention. Face any one of the American flags. We got a kid, hut. Hands the hook. 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 Present. Hook. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Hook. Hook. Oh, say can Present. you see by the dawn's early light What so proudly we hailed As the twilight's last gleaming Whose first stripes and bright stars To the perilous fight For the ramparts we watched was so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare of arms bursting in air gave proof to the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does the hat star spangled banner yet wave for the Seated. Order! Uh, we are uh, having this ceremony for Pearl Harbor Day. Uh, about time, we, the first time we've tried in Barton County, and it's being hosted by the Veterans Council of Barton County. The veterans got together and we said it's about time we started celebrating or remembering the Pearl Harbor Day and resident, residents of Barton County. So, um, it's, very, it's, a very, it's the first we've done it. It's the first time we're doing it, so it's a little shaky. We'll do it better next year. All right, now I'm going to call up. Uh, we have uh, a Marine, uh, Marine uh, uh, Robert Barker, and uh, Navy Cor uh, Chief Petty Officer. You guys come up here. We're going to have. They're going to tell you about Pearl Harbor. December 7th, known as a date which will live in infamy, are words spoken to a stunned American people by President Franklin Delano Roosevelt on December 8th, 1941. 77 years later, we are here at water's edge, and looking out, we can realize that these waters touched and mingle now with the very same waters stung and tinged with blood on that fateful day. 
We know, too, that most of the witnesses to the dastardly surprise attack upon U.S. Navy bases and military installations at the Hawaiian Islands by the Imperial Japanese Navy's Sea and Air Armada sadly are no longer with us. Yet their legacy as the valiant men and women who defended Pearl Harbor on that fateful, bright, sunny Sunday morning, much like today's sky, will always remain. December 7th, 1941 was a day that defined America and it also changed the world forever. As the fires still burned fuel oil upon salt seawater and black smoke rose above into the blue Hawaiian sky from flaming ship holes, the monumental task at hand on that day was to do all that was humanly possible to save the lives of too many other sailors trapped below the decks of Navy ships with the detachments of Marines by their side. On that day, service, sacrifice, and valor were demonstrated by countless American heroes from all walks of life at unprecedented levels. Their response truly demonstrated their spirit, their grit, determination, and toughness that epitomized the greatest generation during the painful Second World War years. Those who did not perish during Pearl Harbor's attack were not mere veterans of the shocking battle, but were survivors of an unprovoked and totally unexpected massive killing spree which took the lives of several thousand young lives, some still asleep at the moment their ships were suddenly destroyed. Our people immediately began preparing to fight the Imperial Japanese military forces that brought an unwelcomed war to America. We know the call to do all that was necessary to win that war became job number one. Let us not overlook that 15 Congressional Medals of Honor were bestowed upon valiant recipients as a result of their exemplary actions during the surprise attack. Another 51 Navy Crosses and 53 Silver Star Medals were awarded for additional acts of exemplary valor and gallantry. Thousands of other acts of heroism were not recognized with medals because documenting the worthy acts was not a priority when the surprise war erupted so. In many cases, far too many, there were no surviving witnesses left to nominate deserving souls for their unknown extraordinary valor demonstrated. Indeed, their awesome acts are now only known but to God. Let us always remember Pearl Harbor Day, for it is a story of a remarkable comeback. The Japanese thought they would strike an early massive and crippling blow to America's Navy and air capabilities and bring our nation to her knees. The controlling militarists of Japan were to learn a very harsh lesson because they failed miserably. Despite the advantage of surprise exploited by the Japanese planes and midget submarines, the feisty Americans at Pearl Harbor intensely destroyed 29 enemy aircraft, damaged 29 others, and sank or beached five mini submarines. Six American battleships with their crews were sunk or damaged during the attack were restored. They were refloated and returned to service. Attack survivors that were physically able to continue their service fought on for the duration of the war or until wounded or killed in the years following the attack. Nearly all of the survivors are gone now for they have joined the more than 2,400 men, women, and children who died during that early morning attack on this historic date. Since they have left us, we must assure that their legacy is not forgotten. Let us all do what we can to keep the factual history of their honor and sacrifice alive in the American consciousness and our nation's scholastic history books. Sixty years after that surprise attack on Pearl Harbor, 
America was caught off guard once again. September 11, 2001 was another day that would live in infamy to a new generation of Americans who would learn that they now had a deeper appreciation of those of the greatest generation. September 11th would mark the beginning of another painful period of worldwide war. A war against an enemy we Americans had never had to fight before. This new war has been called a global war on terrorism. And this war continues to this very moment on this very day. Let us acknowledge that just as military veterans and others of the greatest generation took incredible risks to save their comrades, we saw similar courage from police officers, firefighters, other first responders who entered burning buildings when human logic and survival instincts would compel lesser peoples to move in the direction away from danger. And let us give homage to the incredibly brave American civilians aboard a commercial aircraft over Pennsylvania, hijacked by a team of vicious terrorists on that fateful day. Those passengers decided upon actions that caused us to recognize their collective heroism and sacrifice as brave as any other incredible patriots in the story of America. Many of the nation's heroes of September 11th were also veterans. Some were active duty personnel and others without any like background. But probably all had been taught about the Pearl Harbor attack and following results in history classes. The lessons are many and some are certainly more important than others. Freedom is not free. It must be defended and the price can be very steep. America and her people must be ready and able to do what is necessary to protect, preserve our precious freedoms and our very way of life. We must continue to educate our youth to value past sacrifices and imbue them with a sense of pride in America, a pride that will continue to motivate that very precious, very small percentage of America's young men and women who still selflessly volunteer to serve in our nation's armed forces, ready to do all they are asked to protect our freedoms. For the United States, Pearl Harbor marked the beginning of a huge war. For aggressive Imperial Japanese, it was the beginning of the end. And for those heroes of 77 years ago, we salute you all. And we pledge by our presence here today that we shall always be grateful. God bless you. God bless our World War II veterans and their families. And God bless the United States of America. Now we call upon the Rabbi Omener who would uh, give us some eulogy of this Pearl Harbor Day. Thank you. Thank you, Veterans Council, Martin County. Thank you, myself, for asking me. I initially wasn't told it's a eulogy, but just a, a prayer. Almighty God, by the way, I'm Rabbi Shlomo Omener, director of the Chabad Jewish Center of Martin and Lucy County, and I'm honored to be here to be part of this important day of remembrance of Pearl Harbor. Almighty God, on this day of Pearl Harbor, we honor all those who have given their life on this day and after in the service and defense of our beloved country, the United States of America. In the timeless word of God and wisdom, we are told that the highest thing somebody can do is to be of service to others, be of service to make the world a better place. If one is to save the life of another, this would be the highest calling a person can have in his life. And in fact, the Talmud says that one who saves one life is as if he saved the entire world. In addition to the act of saving someone's life, the act of sacrificing one's life for others, for a country, is of the highest, 
the highest calling a person can have throughout his life. These people who fought courageously to, for the defense of their fellows, for the defense of our country, for the defense of our freedom, have reached the highest that a person can reach in his life. We turn and ask today that all these heroic children of our country who fought courageously and gave their life for the freedom of our country, bless their souls and may they rest in peace. Bless their families, bless all those who serve, who served and serve in our armed forces. Bless and watch all those who are currently serving in the defense of our country, our safety and our freedom. Dear God, bless and watch our great country, a country founded on the foundation that we are all created equal, endowed by you, our creator, with unalienable rights, a nation that stands for freedom, equality, and liberty for all. Let this message resonate over the world, especially as we stand here in the days of the holiday of Hanukkah, which represents that goodness and light will always prevail over evil and darkness. Let us stand strong and unite, as my renowned teacher, the Lubavitcher Rebbe, Rebbe Nachem M. Shneerson of blessed memory, urged us. Let us all recognize that we're all children of the same God. Let us all follow God's universal seven Noahide laws given to all mankind and conduct ourselves in a moral and peaceful way. And let each, each of us find respect and remembrance for those who gave their lives for the safety of our country and our freedom. And let us learn from them and from those who follow in their footsteps and defend our freedom today. Let us learn from these heroes. And even if we're not in the service physically defending our country, let us learn of them and be of service to others in adding positive acts of goodness and kindness, of charity towards each other and an acknowledgement of God. I conclude. Almighty God, hasten the fulfillment of the vision of your prophets when the world will come to its perfected state where there will be no more hunger, illness, no more war, and all evil will be eradicated with the revelation of your presence and the coming of Mashiach, the, only, the Messiah, there will only be the pursuit of goodness and godliness in the world. May we merit to see this speedily in our days. God bless America, and let us say, Amen. Thank you.